What did Elon Musk get wrong about the F-35 fighter? So to start, Elon Musk tweeted out this line, meanwhile, some idiots are still building manned fighter jets like the F-35, and it was regarding this particular video, which kind of showed like this synchronized display of drones. Now, this video does look pretty cool, but it ignores some key differences between manned and unmanned aircraft. And I know a little bit about this stuff. I work for a drone company, the Texas Era Med Lab. We deliver whole blood on demand to wounded soldiers. In fact, I'll be down in Dallas, Texas all next week because we just signed a lease on a 10 acre test site. And while I'm in Dallas, I'm gonna be using my three degrees to assemble conference room furniture and cubicles. <laughs> Startup life, man. Uh, the one good part about it is that I convinced the CEO that we need a company shotgun because there are some wild hogs on the property. So uh, Remington 870 or Mossberg 500, let me know in the comments below. And by the way, I did speak with the CEO and all the fans that wanted to invest but aren't accredited, you can go to WeFunder slash Aeromedlab and invest with as little as $250. It'll convert to equity uh, in the first priced round, which should be Series A. But back on track here about Elon Musk and drones. Saying that idiots are still building manned fighter jets is, is a very bad take. And this is for a few reasons. The first is that we really shouldn't expect the next war to look like the war in Ukraine. I believe that we are actually going to see the rise and the fall of the small cheap drone all contained in this one conflict in Ukraine. And here's why. When I was at the AUSA convention a few months back, uh, everything was either drone or counter drone. And right now, I think we're seeing a lot of drones in Ukraine for, for two basic reasons. The first reason is that there really isn't an effective drone countermeasure system yet. Yes, there is electronic warfare, but if you uh, make the drone AI powered or wire guided, then electronic warfare is rendered useless. But once nation states figure out how to do counter drone, either with dogfighting drones of their own or with lasers, the effectiveness of small cheap drones will diminish. Second reason is that Ukraine is making extensive use of drones right now because they have to. They have no other choice. Europe and the US really dropped the ball when delivering artillery ammunition. And so the Ukrainians are using these FPV or first person view drones to trip Russians in onesies and twosies. And that's great, but you need to a trip by the bushel. And a small cheap drone might carry a warhead but that is nothing compared to the kind of bomb load an F-35 can carry in its bomb base. An F-35 attrits by the bushel. So if you think of a small cheap drone as an effector, yeah, it can have weapons effects. It can have effects on target, but even a swarm of small cheap drones, they can't take out a bridge. They can't take out an underground bunker. They can't take out a building. And you might need those three capabilities in combat, and right now only a fighter or perhaps a cruise missile can actually perform that specific effector task. Now, also note that small cheap drones don't have the range needed to project power. Something like an F-35 has nearly unlimited range with mid-air refueling. At this point, range is really only limited by pilot fatigue. Small cheap drones have incredibly limited range. Uh, our Aeromed Lab drone has a range of about 40 kilometers or 24 miles, which is roughly half the distance between uh, a level three trauma center and the flot or forward line of troops. So actually one of the reasons we pitch blood thermoses through a window is that it, it saves battery life. You lose battery life when you hover or when you land and have to take off again. So small cheap drones like the kind Elon Musk was referring to certainly have a place, especially in things like reconnaissance, but they're not gonna take the place of a piece of equipment like the F-35 anytime soon. Now, if you scale that drone up to something like a loyal wingman drone like the uh, XQ-58A Valkyrie, yeah, we can talk about that. But even those drones are what are called HIDL, human in the loop drones. So Valkyrie may be making decisions and operating autonomously, but ultimately the choice to fire a munition will always come down to a human. And if you're in an electronic warfare contested environment, I got news for you. You might never actually reach that human to make that decision. And I gotta tell you, 
the, the electromagnetic spectrum is the new high ground, right? There's only one electromagnetic spectrum and we have to dominate that electromagnetic spectrum in order to wage warfare, in order to control these drones. And right now, that electromagnetic spectrum is contested by all of our adversaries. Now, you can kind of defeat some of this with making things fully autonomous, but that's kind of difficult to do on a weapons platform. We're st we still haven't made that cognitive leap yet to that Skynet human out of the loop where the actual drone is making the decisions to fire. Now, Aramed Lab's drone is 100% fully autonomous. It's Hoodle or human out of the loop. But as long as I'm with Aramed Lab, our drones will never carry a lethal payload. So we can kind of get away with Hoodle. And if you want to talk about making an armed drone fully autonomous and Hoodle, yeah, let's have that conversation, Elon. But full disclosure, I own a Tesla and I have full self-driving on my Tesla. I got news for you, bub. Needs work. <laughs> you know, full self-driving is really HODL or human on the loop because you constantly need to be monitoring for threats. And more than once, my car has taken the wrong road, especially in Northern Virginia. And combat is exponentially more difficult than driving in Northern Virginia. We are nowhere near the level of tech to load a loyal wingman with JDAMs, pat it on the belly and say, okay, boy, go get the evildoers. So another reason this is a bad take is that the F-35 is really a flying supercomputer with an enormous amount of sensors that can tie in different weapons platforms. And with small, cheap drones, the sensors are getting better, but they are nowhere near the sensor capability of an F-35. It's best to think of the F-35 like a quarterback, like Lamar Jackson. It calls the plays and it can pass the ball to whoever's open, but can also run with the ball if it needs to. And small, cheap drones, they, they really only have the payload capacity to do one or maybe two things. They can do ISR, meaning Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance, and maybe they can drop munition if they have them. But that munition it drops are going to have limited effects. Now, ideally, the small cheap drone is best suited in the ISR role. You know, drone dropping munitions might seem kind of cool, but it's really an invention that's born out of necessity. I'm sure the Ukrainians would rather have precision fires to a trit by the bushel instead of by onesies and twosies like they're doing with these FPV drones. But to paraphrase Donald Rumsfeld, you go to war with the army you have, not the army you want or you wish to have at a later date. So in the end, Elon Musk calling the F-35 supporters idiots is a mistake of Rumsfeldian proportions. Hey, you know, uh, it's almost Christmas and you know what that means? You gotta go to those office Christmas parties. And if you've got nothing to wear, uh, get one of my A Very NORAD Christmas shirts from Bunker Branding. Features an American F-22 and a Canadian CF-18 escorting Santa on his midnight ride. And hopefully soon, uh, I'll be able to replace that CF-18 with a Canadian CF-35. Fingers crossed, you'll have that bird by uh, 2026, Canada. And uh, you know what else? I wrote a novel. Uh, my Warlock uh, novel did so well that I wrote Wind Machine which is a novel about a hedge fund manager's AI supercomputer who predicts a limited nuclear exchange with China. So do you trade on that or do you try to actually stop the war? And in a case like that, how do you even stop the war? What do you do? Call the Pentagon and say, hey, I figured out there's going to be a war. So it's a fun book. Uh, it's available on Amazon, on Kindle, and on paperback. And there'll be an audiobook version for Marines in a couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, no. Tis the office Christmas party, and I have nothing to wear. Hey, kid, what's going on? Think tank! Office Christmas parties can be tough, but a Christmas sweater from Bunker Branding can make it better. Awesome! A very NORAD Christmas! Yeah, it's got an American F-22 and a Canadian CF-18 escorting Santa on his midnight ride. But there's even more from Bunker Branding. Alcoholics moving cargo. Intel life. Air assault. Live, laugh, launch for Destroyer, Trident, High Mars, and Patriot. Think outside the bomb, Drone Sweet Drone, Department of the Boat People, Landmines, and even the Tow Missile. It would behoove you to grab one today. Can Poco Brandy help me with my sexual harassment complaint from work? We're a t-shirt company. Have you tried not being a jerk? No. 